10 years ago to the day, a friendly guy named Jean-Claude changed the course of my entrepreneurial journey forever. During his user interview, Jean-Claude very simply but bluntly told us, guys, I don't, need yet, I don't need yet another app. If you really want to help me, let's chat. And so we did. He inspired us to, di to ditch two years of work building a platform that failed to get proper traction and start working on a vision for an AI assistant for students. We were a bit early for that vision, so most of my time at Jam, also exciting, felt a bit like that. But I did fall in love with the possibilities, even a glimpse of what could AI bring to us. I fell in love with the magic of chatting and prompting instead of scrolling and texting and everything. So two years ago, I left the company, and I decided to take it a bit easier on myself. I dropped the never-ending stand-ups. I dropped the tickets full of feature requests. I dropped the trailer cards, and I changed life. I decided to stop working on AI and start working with AI. And I realized that the very people who actually put a lot of time and effort and energy building these complex technologies usually rarely use them to their benefits. So I'm not an engineer. I still can't write a single line of code. But I fell in love with the possibilities of AI. And I don't want to try and go ahead and guess, make well guess about how AI can help you become a better engineer or be better at coding. But I can share with you something that I feel like everyone in this room has to do in order to have a very prolific work life. You need to focus, build something people love, and do work that is meaningful to you. And this, why, this is why I'm here today. I really want to share with you how very practically, concretely, I use AI in my daily life to do better work. And I want to share some of my best practices, so hopefully you can gain one or two key insights that really helps you transform your work life. So the first thing I did was build AI as a sidekick. I use it for just clear my head, clear my mental load, you know, simple thing that you might be doing, like write contract, to-do list, an FAQ that I had just then had to put on my website, make sure my emails are being handled very smoothly with my AI that knows my tone of voice, read my emails, and write simple answers. I also use it to create automation using a co-pilot within Zapier to make sure my invoices are being sent to the appropriate file to my accountant. And finally, one thing I did was create reminders that are sent to my WhatsApp from my emails, so I don't need to check my emails, and I can focus on my deep work. So using AI as a sidekick, I just want to start with asking you these questions. Can you identify three simple things that you currently manage manually, and how can automating them can help you with your workflow? Then I moved on to a second phase, more interesting, creating an AI that acts as a COO, someone alongs me who helps me think, who helps me make better decisions. So a few examples. I, again, did the, the cycle that I did for creating Jam, understanding what people want, creating at light speed, finding your users, boost engagement, which I, which I think is the cycle that everyone goes through when you're trying to build a product. So understanding what people want, I ask people to always come and talk to me. Talk to me for 20 minutes. My calendar is full of people who come talk to me for the first time, or actual users, current users who talk to me. So I don't get another Jean-Claude just coming after two years and telling me, I don't, I don't care about what you're doing. And all of these calls are being transcribed by my AI, sent to me, and I get all the data. So building on that, I can create a light speed. I use ChatGPT, for instance, to ask me questions based on all of these user interviews, based on podcast transcripts, talks I give, articles I wrote, anything, to, for instance, as you can see here, ask me five questions to help me build my next products. I'm here talking about a bootcamp on AI that I give to non-technical people. Then I went on to finding users. AI helps me create content to make sure I'm always talking to my users. So, Content, 
building on Claude. I fed it with a lot of the content that I wrote previously, and now AI helps me create newsletters, LinkedIn posts, emails, video scripts, etc. Boosting engagement, the last step of my virtual cycle, all of my live sessions for my bootcamp are being recorded, which helps me ask my AI then to come up with plans for each of my students, for um, tools to use, metrics they want to follow, and how do they want to make progress. And finally, this is more for fun that I, I still haven't done, done, done it, but scaling. Bienvenidos a este I've been asked if I could do the bootcamp in Spanish. Con el arte del y estoy de tenerlos con nosotros. I use Lipit, prolific French startup, to translate this. But if I were lazy, I could use Welcome him. to this bootcamp on AI, a unique training for teams to level up on or change to her. This first module is dedicated vibe. to the art of the prompt, how to converse with AIs, guide them to... Or use more realistically my digital twin. So this is not me talking. So my question to you, if you can use AI as your COO, is how can it help you make better decisions and grow your projects? And that leads us to the third step, the like boss of this AI level, is to actually use AI to grow personally, professionally, to use AI as your personal co-founder. So I use it to help me think, to challenge me, to help me go beyond what I do. So one thing I did, for instance, I fed an AI the outline of the content that I wanted to share with you today on stage, and this is what it told me. It's talking this about it. This presentation frames it as a partnership, even. I'm a co-founder. Exactly. AI is your co-founder. Pretty wild, right? It's a bold claim, for sure. When I first saw the title, I have to admit, I was a bit skeptical. Me too. But the way they break it down, it's, um, it really grabbed my attention. Skepticism. I can work with that. So that's, that was a good insight for me to realize that AI, listening to my plan for this talk, is like, nah, that's, that's good, that's striking, but you have to get practical. So that's what I'm doing hopefully getting very practical. One thing I do too is also help me gain intellectual perspective. So I give AI a snapshot of my bookshelf and I said, what should I read next? What should I buy next? It suggested The Power of Now, which is my favorite book. So I was like, good, seems like I'm a very defined persona, thank you. But can you help me go beyond? So instead of using the regular chat GPT, I, I built an AI agent an AI personal co-founder, I will give you the link at the end so you can use it and tailor it to your needs. It speaks every language you can speak it, so whatever your native tongue, speak to it, and it will ask you questions, help you think, and ask material from you. So if I ask my personal co-founder, again, this is my bookshelf, what should I read next? What it gives me is much more interesting and different from me than if I just used the regular chat GPT. I also, this is a bit meta, but I also used it to help me challenge the abstract for this very talk. When I compared the results from chat GPT, the regular one, to these ones, my personal co-founder, I was blown away. It really gets me. We talked a lot, and it, help, it helps me go beyond and further. To live a life well lived, and this is my third question to you, if you really want to start using AI, not just as a tool to focus and reclaim your time, but really some, someone, something to help you go beyond. How do you define a life well lived and how can AI help you achieve this vision? So in the second part of this talk, I want to share do's and don'ts, my practical guides to how to integrate AI for real in your daily life. So the first tips out of the three is to get real. It's great, we see on LinkedIn, oh, AI generates PowerPoint presentations, AI does this, create that. That's fun for the likes and the wow effects, but it doesn't actually work in daily life. So for me, the mix of real life use cases and real possibilities is where the magic happens. So I'm gonna take you to a project that I have is with my partner. We're trying to build a former farming house in the south of France. So if I ask an AI, can you build a presentation to convince our bank to lend us money? I mean, the results, in a few seconds, I have a presentation. It's impressive. It's a wow effect. Great. 
I can't use it. I can't send that to my bank. It doesn't make any sense. It's way too generic. Now, if I use the transcripts from my calls with you know, many stakeholders, and then I ask AI, use this transcript to write the content for a presentation to help me convince my bank, we're getting closer. But that's still not enough. My second tip is don't suck at prompting. You might have heard Jigo, Jigo, I like it better in France, French, garbage in, garbage out. Go from garbage in, garbage out to value in, value out. And if you're too lazy to actually create a great prompt, use AI. I use a GPT called Prompt Maker to help me go from a bad prompt to a Jigo to value in, value out, upgraded prompts. So now if I send this upgraded prompt with a transcript to an AI, and then I put it into an AI, Gamma, this one that creates a presentation, in the same amount of time, maybe 10 seconds more, now we have something that is realistic and that I did send to my bank. Way more interesting. And third, maybe it would be don't rely on AI. Use it as an extension of you, but not a replacement. Don't delegate something you don't know to AI. Always be checking what they do, what they say. And one thing that I do like 20 times a day is I've developed the habits of asking AI to rate itself. You can try it. Nine times out of 10, it will say, I just gave you an 85 out of 100 response. You're like, dude, why, do you, why would you do that? That's how it's built. And when I gave this, this answer from ChatGPT to Claude, another LLM, it gave me a 7 out of 10 from the 10 out of 10 of ChatGPT. So really work with multiple AIs, know their strengths and their weaknesses. And bonus would be have fun, or at least my definition of fun, of fun might be different than yours, but I really encourage you to have fun when you play with AI. For me, in the context of this project, was to take the interior design of my house in Paris and apply it to what would be our dream house in the south of France. So I built a concept for a tiny house, for a meeting room in a greenhouse. That was fun to me. I used Elia Studio, a prolific French startup. So you see the possibilities are actually endless. You can be creative, you can gain time, be, go deeper, think, be more productive. And that, to me, is AI's uncomfortable gift. And not because I la I'm lazy, but because I thought they phrased it really well. I'm going to let my two AIs tell you about this concept of AI's Start uncomfortable gift. Start talking about what it calls the uncomfortable gift of AI. OK, yeah. That phrase has been sticking with me, the uncomfortable gift. What exactly does that mean? So the idea is that as AI becomes more capable of handling those routine tasks, the things that used to take up so much of our time, it forces us to confront a big question. What makes us uniquely human? I see what you mean. If AI can handle all those things we used to spend our days doing, where does that leave us? What's our purpose then? Right. It's a question we can't just ignore. The presentation argues that the shift, while potentially uncomfortable, is actually a huge opportunity. It's a chance for us to reconnect with those intrinsically human qualities that AI can't replicate. Yep, I thought that was beautifully phrased from the material I gave it. AI's uncomfortable gift. To quote Yann Lequin from Meta, AI is dumber than a cat. Just recently said that. So our ro its role is not to replace or steal our intelligence, but rather to push, uh, push us to be more intelligent and to be exactly where we need to be. To be in, what is my favorite word ever, our ikigai, this mix of what we're good at, what we love to do, what the world needs, and where we can contribute. So, as I said, the possibilities are endless, and this is to me AI's bit of comfortable gift. It's like, it's not gonna replace me, but it's telling me to go and live my best life, if I can say so. So I'm gonna ask you the question, are you gonna use it to build the missing feature of your app? Are you going to contribute to a major scientific breakthrough? Do you want to publish a deeply personal book? Or focus on playing tennis with your kids? Maybe even create mesmerizing art? The choice is yours.
Thank you. And I promised the personal assistant that you can use a GPT that I built, and you can build yours, but it's really fun to play with. Thank you so much.